Amazon, 30 bucks. <laughs> so I was so excited to speak about courageous living. Uh, immediately, two thoughts came into my mind. Number one, uh, courage is not the absence of fear, but acting despite fear. And the equally important, courage is knowing something will hurt and doing it anyway. So is stupidity, and that's what makes life so hard. <laughs> With that being said, this is the actual reason I was asked to speak here. Uh, this picture, well, kind of that picture and this. No. <laughs> and see, this was said as courageous living, but to me it's really not. Uh, this was my daily life. This is me being stupid. But with that being said, I do need, before we get started, uh, somebody with a phone and keys. As you see, I do need phone and keys. Just somebody. Hi, there we go. Please come on up. And uh, if you can, rush on up because this is great. Thank you. We have this in here. Please place that inside uh, your phone. Place that inside. Thank you. You have your keys. Good. You're going to need to get into that later. Give her a round of applause. She gets to head back. Now, I spent 20 years performing around the world as a magician. That's why I asked her to do this. I even spent two and a half years performing around the country as a touring uh, entertainer. It's actually just a nice way of saying I was homeless for two and a half years. And in that time, I have learned that people ask as just as many questions about being homeless as they ask about the nail. Now, if you can see right here, there we go. That should be locked. Don't worry, you'll be able to get into that later. So uh, for me, being homeless is the next logical step in my career. That was the best idea for me. Now, it's not that I was worried about being homeless. I just figured out I was going to take a step in the next direction. And that next step was a trip to Vegas. 52 hours on a Greyhound bus. Wow. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Got it four times now. I love it. I went out, I got to a magic convention where I was able to find a group of magicians. They jam all night long. Excuse you. And uh, when I got there, I happened to find a group of people who took me in and I was surrounded by magicians for three days. But when the convention ended, I started asking myself some very important questions. Where was I going to sleep? Where was I going to eat? Where was I going to get clean? I mean, I was a 19-year-old boy, so that one was not too strong. But the other two, those were important. But when you decide to get rid of societal standards, and you don't look at sleeping as like a bedroom with a roof and a bed and stuff, and you just see it as more of a horizontal activity, you can start finding places like this. I spent six months sleeping here. Every 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. And it was lovely, glorious. I loved every moment of it. Because, as an optimist, I always just made the best out of the situation. To me, this wasn't the end all, be all. This was just the next step as to what I was going to do. Now, I realized what I was doing. I was paying attention to my inner voice. Whatever it was saying, I was going with it. And we all have one. Maybe not monologuing like we do, or like he does, but at least going through your daily questions, right? And if you think you don't, by the way, you just proved my point. So for me, I'm not saying go out and be homeless, by the way. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying what question in your life are you overthinking? Now, for me, I was able to branch out and do other things. Like this showed me that I was not ready to do box illusions. Didn't need to do it. Don't need to solve somebody in half, but it allowed me to open up a new avenue to learn how to do this. How did I get there? Well, I just said yes to everything that came across. For some reason, I said yes to shoving a power drill in my nose, but not to sawing a stranger in half. Make that as you will. Apparently, that's not funny. We'll do that. But truth be told, I love what I do, and I fell in love with doing this. For some reason, I fell in love with shoving things into my face, or the sideshow community. And that, Miami joke, that has brought me around the world, all the way from Italy, even to performing in a speakeasy owned by Al Capone. That was cool. Like I, I had a moment. But genuinely, the best thing that I can say, the only thing that gave me true courage was the idea of falling in love with what it is. Now, you may not always be able to find the thing, and that's why you have to go out there and explore it on your own. To quote Shane Coichin, he says, you will know your medium the instant you realize how in love you are with what it brings out of you. That, for me, was such an important thing to realize. Because when I found magic, I fell in love instantly. And that's what each of you can do. Each of you can literally go out, find that one thing you're passionate about, and you'll feel it. Now, how do you know when you feel it? I can't really tell you. It's 
like love. You fall in love for the first time, and you know. The thing is that this is your life. You're the only one that can make these decisions. You're the only one that can live out your dream. But don't worry, there's still other people out there, and that doesn't mean they can't help you out. They are definitely people that can show you along the way. Now, we have somebody in the audience. Uh, I have their phone. Yeah, please come up and join us again. And your name this time. Leslie. Leslie, everyone give Leslie a big round of applause. Now, currently, all of the people that you can get in contact with are in that box. Yes. Yes. And you can't see what's inside that box. And uh, to be honest, I don't have the key to the box. Yeah, uh, you can take these. These are my keys. Uh, please try them out on there. Yeah, all of my keys, you can please try them out on that padlock. Just try to open it. Now, while she's doing that, I'm going to point out something. When everything gets complicated, all you need to do is simplify things. Right? Don't get yourself to be too much in the problems. Try to oversimplify what it is that you're doing. Right now, she's probably wondering how to get in here. But there's some very simple questions to ask. Don't get ahead of us. Number one, if I don't have a home, what key are you going to use? You don't have a what? If I don't have a home, what key would you use? Your home key, right? Please uh, take out your house key. Okay. And give that a try. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. Please open up the padlock. Okay. Let's take this <laughs> off. And inside, I believe, is still yeah. your phone. That's yours. Give Leslie a big round of applause. Thank you. I'll take that. And before I go, I just want to say one thing, which is that we all, or you all get to get off this roller coaster and go home. You get to have fun and enjoy your lives. But us as entertainers, we don't. We get to stay on this roller coaster forever. So before I leave and before you head out, do yourselves a favor and ask yourself one question. What is your home? Thank you. Yeah.